Coming up next on the Jeff Crilly Show, you're going to meet a fabulous young artist who's going to teach us all how to heal the world through art. Her journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, have you noticed how art can change a room? And now corporate America has recognized that as well. You go to hospitals these days and hospitals can become a place where you get anxious, but then you see these beautiful murals and, and pieces of art that really kind of bring down the tension in the room. To talk about that, Nita Patel with Nita Patel Fine Art. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Jen. Yeah. Well, I want to hear your journey because uh, I, I, you, you must have probably always been interested in art, but you, you made a bold move a few years ago to actually quit your day job in corporate America. Yes, yes. You know, I had this dream that one day when I retired from corporate America that I would become a gallery owner or maybe I would even work at a gallery just because it was beautiful to be surrounded by such beauty, grace, elegance. It was a good feeling and I wanted to be surrounded by that. And as I went along my journey, I think I woke up one day and realized, why am I going to wait till I retire? And what does that even mean? And I decided to, I started visiting galleries. I just immersed myself in the art space to understand what that meant for me. And it kind of transitioned me into starting to create art because I would see things and ask myself, what would this look like if it was in this color or in this shape or you know, just different variations of what I found. And I started creating art and that was the beginning of my art journey. Wow, well, congratulations for leaving corporate America because I did the same thing and, it, and it's kind of nerve wracking walking away from, you know, the, the comfort of a paycheck every week. Uh, we're gonna talk much more about her art in a minute, but let's go ahead and roll this piece. <laughs> that you have so much personality and I like you almost look like you stepped off the cover of uh, you know Vogue or something like that um, talk about what inspires you how do you come up with new pieces you know it's been a journey at the beginning it was travel people connections variation of external things that inspired me and as time has gone on I've realized especially when COVID happened uh, and we couldn't travel, we couldn't connect, and I learned to find inspiration from within uh, through my spiritual practices, meditating, just, and I have a quote that I share, you know, when you find inspiration, uh, when you find beauty within you, you see it in all things around you, and that was from that uh, introspection and meditation and my practices internally that allowed me to find inspiration to create what was yes in my head, my heart. Well, tell me how your process, because, you know, famously Mozart could hear the whole, um, you know, 
concerto before he sat down to, to write. Are you able to see the completed project? So in my collection that I launched in 2020 called Opalescence, the fall before that, I had a dream where these beautiful, colorful, can large canvases were everywhere. And it was something that I had never seen before, not in a museum, a gallery. It was, I couldn't understand where it came from. And I think after I thought about it for several weeks, I realized, I think I'm supposed to create this. Wow. And of course, you know, when you dream about something or when something comes in your mind and then you actually create it, it's a completely different, right. <laughs> it turns out completely different. But a lot of my inspiration for that collection and a lot of the pieces that I still create today came from that dream. And I, I just knew that that was something I had to make. Absolutely. Uh, we've got a little video and I want you to kind of describe what we're watching here. This was a show that you did in New York. Uh, no, this was actually my first show of, uh, solo show in Dallas. Oh, cool. Yes, and this is the Opalescence collection that I just shared the story right. about. That's beautiful. Now, do you get nervous before kind of a, an opening? I do just for logistical purposes, yeah. just wanting to make sure that everything is in place. But, you know, the more I've done them, the more I'm just very relaxed. I think in my last show, I didn't blink. You know, <laughs> didn't bat an eye. <laughs> Tell me about your clients. Uh, do you work with large corporations or individuals or families or how do you work? Um, I work with uh, corporations and also private clients. Yes. So in, in different capacities, I recently launched my mission, Healing the World Through Art. And it's really about helping people understand how art and color therapy can be healing. You know, our world today is a little chaotic between the politics and the economics and this you know everything in between and i think it's really really important for us to find different ways to heal ourselves to uplift ourselves you know we can't maybe change the political climate or we can't change the socio-economic status of what's going on around us but what we can do is learn simple things like how colors can elevate our emotions and educating corporate leaders about that I think is very important because you have a, you know, organization of thousands of employees and you're trying to motivate them. You're trying to find ways to be more productive um, or getting them to be more productive. And now employers are calling employees back into the office, which is a big shift after four years of flexibility. And, uh, you know, so how do you get people motivated wanting to be there? And to me, educating leaders about color therapy is very important it's key right now because you can have strategically placed artwork in a workplace that can just subconsciously subliminally elevate emotions mm. having something let's just say for example red it's a motivating color mm -hmm. it invigorates you so it makes you feel you know that it, it increases productivity in a sense sure. um, but balance that with a blue that gives you a sense of security or calmness. Um, yellow, that brings joy, balance of emotions, elevates your emotions. If you notice in a healthcare facility or in a uh, Alzheimer's facility, for example, a well, I should say a well-designed Alzheimer's facility, the color yellow uplifts emotions. Um, it brings joy and balance. And so it regulates the emotions of the patients there. Uh, so color can be used in so many different ways to help us very specifically now. Yes. And, and so educating corporate leaders on that is very important. Um, I also, it also allows me to place my very large abstract paintings in offices and lobbies. Um, I like to paint eight by 10, yeah. 10 by 12 feet paintings. And it allows me, it gives me an opportunity to also place those. Not everybody has walls in their homes sure. that large. <laughs> it's tough to feel good when you come into like the lobby of a building and see one of your pieces. Uh, oh, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to describe, it, yeah. It's an amazing feeling. I also want to talk about your best-selling book. Uh, so, Boss Vibes. I love, I love the title. We're going to put up the full screen graphic. Uh, tell us about the book and why you wrote it. So, I 
Originally, I was born in England. I went to school there for a few years. Um, actually, my family traveled back and forth between Dallas and London. And so I got to go to school in my formative years in England and here in Dallas. Um, and I learned a lot about etiquette, as you <laughs> know, um, in, in the schooling system there. And so when I would come here, every time I would come here, I would just be fascinated how people didn't know how to sit right or posture or walk. I mean, it was just very simple things like that. And as I grew into my career in the corporate world, I became a manager. I just had a, you know, I was interviewing a lot of people and I just saw how people did not know how to show up. Yeah. Um, or if they were, somebody was wanting to work on a big project or they wanted to be promoted, they didn't know how to present themselves. Sure. And it was just simple things of your personal brand that I felt it was my responsibility to share with the world and let people know, hey, if you present yourself in this way, it's not about social acceptance. It's yes. really about you feeling confident about yourself. And I'll give you a quick example. Posture is a very simple thing to talk about um, in, this, in the topic of etiquette, where if you sit up straight um, or if you do a power pose, you know, the... Mm -hmm. The Beyonce pose, the Wonder Woman pose, or Beyonce pose, or the traditional Mad Men pose, where the gentleman has his legs elevated on the desk, you know, with yeah. his arms behind his head. Sure. Those poses are power poses because they actually change the body chemistry. It reduces cortisol levels, it increases your testosterone. And so when you stay in that position for two minutes, it changes how you feel. It actually leaves you feeling more confident. Mm. So it's not, etiquette is not just about social acceptance. It's about, I feel good about myself. And when you have a, when you have to go into a difficult conversation or a meeting that's gonna be tough or de dealing with teenagers, sure. you know, anything, it's good to know these little tips and tricks. Well, I, I love the way you show up to the world, and I, I have to believe that there's a lot of young ladies watching this right now saying, I want to be her. So what's your, what's your advice to a young person who's still struggling to find their own identity? You know, I would say confidence is really, really important. And the thing that is misconstrued uh, for young individuals today, I believe, is the difference in confidence and being authentic and being professional. I think there's a there's a delineation there that people lose. And so people say, okay, I'm being authentic. Let me wear my pajamas out to the grocery store. Okay, that's okay. You know, I wanna show up in my pajamas to work. Not okay, right? right? Um, it's not gonna make you feel good. If you put on your cutest little black dress or purple or green or white, whatever color you like, and you put on a pair of heels, how that makes you feel is very different than how a pair of pajamas makes you feel. Wow. So understanding that what's authentic versus what's professional, there's a reason. That little black dress and heels, it's going to make you feel confident. And guess what? When you're at work or um, with your friends or, you know, whatever it might be, you're going to have better ideas yes. because you're going to feel good about yourself. You know, you're going to contribute and it's going to create connections for you. There's so many different aspects of how that dress is making you feel versus if you showed up in your flip flops and your pajamas and yeah. well, you're going to be a little bit more casual and who cares, you know, a more laissez faire attitude. So how do you want to show up? How do you want to feel? How you etiquette is all about how you want to feel in the world. And if you want to feel good, which I think we all do, sure. you know, these are just small little tips and tricks to make you feel good about yourself. Outstanding. So we've got about a minute left. Final thoughts. What do you want to leave people with? You know, everything that I do, I want to help people understand that there are very simple ways to feel good about yourself, whether it's elevating your posture, doing a power pose, or using art therapy to make yourself feel better. Um, you know, I I'll share another little example real quick is the color green. I didn't talk about that earlier. You know, if you have a heartbreak, if your heart is hurting, you have anxiety, stress, anything that is in your heart center, if you just wear a green shirt, a green dress, a green blouse, um, take a walk out in nature, go hiking, surround yourself with some greenery, there are very simple things that you can do to make yourself feel good. You don't have to necessarily buy a 
$100,000 piece of art to do that. Um, art therapy and color therapy is all encompassing and we can do it every day. Wow. Well, thank you for making the world a, a, a better place with your art. We're going to end with the website, which is nita-patel.com. The great Nita Patel. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.